So I'm going to do an overview of mobile learning. Um, I'm going to start uh, with talking generally about the issues and then focus much more on language learning. Uh, mobile learning in some ways a bit like digital games uh, in the way that it makes that crossover um, into general education much more closely than, than perhaps we've done so in other parts of the course unit. So as we get to the end of the course unit, uh, you know, we're much closer to general educational issues. So mobile learning and game-based learning are something we see a, a lot about. I mean, I guess, you know, we see a lot of arguments for video as well in, in, in general education, but, you know, essentially uh, there's a lot more written about mobile learning in general education at the moment than there is in language learning, although you know there is a body of literature, as I'm sure some of you will be aware. So why are we interested then in these technologies, particularly, um, and and not in you know the more standard desktop type machines? And this kind of data that you could get uh, from uh, many different sites tells you why. I mean, essentially, there are so many of these bits of technology around in the world. And they're not just around in the obvious parts of the world, they're around uh, in, in, in uh, hard to reach contexts, uh, in rural contexts, in, in countries uh, where educational resources are, are fairly limited. So they have lots of, you know, there's lots of good reasons why we might think about using mobiles. And of course, uh, so many more people have access to them. So you can find lots of sources of this kind of data, people telling you, you know, how commonly they are in the world, you know, how many millions of, of, of phones there are. Um, and the GSMA have like a little clicker uh, that shows you uh, all sorts of information on a regular basis. But, you know, the, the, the obvious countries are the ones that where the, the, there's most phone pe penetration. You also find lots of uh, general information about uh, uh, younger people and uh, the way that they, you know, what uh, technologies they, they, they use in schools. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful about this uh, information because it's often uh, quoted about countries like the US uh, rather than, than other countries in the world. And people uh, tend to then extrapolate that to, to many other countries where, of course, the situations are, are not quite the same. Um, so this is uh, an interesting, uh, this is a link. If you click on this on the slides, it'll, it'll take you to a website where it talks about some of the ways that, you know, some of the access that, that children have and the kinds of access they have to different technologies. Uh, in, in, in different phases of schooling. And you'll see there along the bottom line uh, that you know by the time that children start going to high school, 51% uh, of, of children are taking you know, a phone uh, to school with them. So that's quite, quite a significant percentage of, of the students. Um, I'm sure that in, in many contexts, you know, it, it, it's much bigger than that. Uh, and of course, in higher education, you know, we, we see a lot more technology around there as well. Again, there are typical uh, arguments that, that are made uh, that I think we have to be quite careful and critical of. You know, the you know we've we've had Skinner's teaching machine since 1954, or, or the idea of Skinner's teaching machine, um, and you know, the way that technology is going to revolutionise the, the world uh, is something that that has been shown to be not the case. I mean, Ertmer. Uh, who's another writer in this area, talks a lot about these kinds of issues as well. And we had Bill Gates in 2009 predicting uh, that, that you know, 10 years from 2009, which is not so far away now, uh, it being 2016, um, that, that, that technology will have, you know, changed education. In some cases, you know, in some places in education, it probably has much more than in the regular classroom, in the lecture theatre. Um, and uh, you know that McQuiggan et al book uh, that this uh, some of these uh, ideas come from some of these quotes come from is actually a good in interesting overview so you know you can think about this yourselves and what do you think you know do you think in your world maybe in parts of your world some of you uh, you know have a situation where you do have very technologically rich uh, classes maybe you know it, 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 education in the next two years will change dramatically and and we'll uh, you know we'll, we'll use uh, technology in a much more significant way than we do at the moment and particularly mobile technologies but we all know that there are you know lots of uh, you know lots of barriers as well to 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 practice 
So we, again, you know, as I said at the beginning, uh, we see that the basic arguments for digital games and mobile learning, it's, uh, to some extent, you know, they're, they're similar, um, and but but they're also different as well because uh, you know with uh, digital uh, games, uh, you, they, you know, they require. You, know, you can play digital games on on mobile phones, but you do need at least a smartphone. Whereas with, you know, uh, with even with basic phones, uh, you can do interesting things with them. You can send text messages. Uh, there are basic reader systems. There are all sorts of ways that that, that you can use them. So, uh, you know, mobile learning is obviously built on you know the experience and opportunity afforded by the evolution of mobile technologies. So, uh, you know, th there are lots of different possibilities, even uh, the elements that are built into a basic phone, you know, the fact that a lot of them have a camera, you know, even really basic phones have an ability to record sound, for example, uh, you, can, you can store that sound and you can send it in various kinds of ways. So immediately there, there are opportunities for learning uh, that, that you can make use of. So you can have, you know, uh, you can have text-based groups. Uh, I mean, obviously, a lot of us use tools like WhatsApp or WeChat now, um, but you know they, they are there even on the most basic phones as well. A second area that's uh, it, you know often mentioned is this notion of anywhere, anytime. So you know, learning on the bus, learning at, at home, uh, learning you know learning in the park. Um, you know, anytime you fancy a bit of learning, you can do it. So you know, in a sense. You know, we learn things kind of automatically now. We look them up on, on Google, you know, well, what is such and such? What does that mean? Or, you know, who said something about this? And, and you know, we immediately look that up and we kind of learn that, we, we get that. Because it's, you know, as it says there, instant on-demand access, we can do that anywhere. And that's a key point. Uh, if you want to use these tools effectively, then you have to have that kind of, you know, that on-demand access. And that's not true. It, it's still in many parts of the world. Um, uh, you know, if you take a country like India, um, which is, you know, one of the most populous countries in the world, the second most populous countries in the world, there are millions and millions of mobile phones available in India. Um, but uh, in terms of internet access, internet access is quite low. Uh, so you know, around about twenty percent of people can access the internet. Uh, but you know, something like uh, you know, sort of seventy five eighty percent you know have access to, to mobile phones so there's quite quite a, a you know a, a, a difference so in terms of you know accessing information using it and managing it in certain kinds of ways uh, then, then that's problematic I think um, one of the interesting points that's made in in this quotation is, is the next one where the idea of you know this being you know it being a personalized world so uh, you know, we've been exchanging ideas uh, on uh, my Google Doc about uh, different bits of uh, software apps that we use uh, on, on you know, in my case, on my iPad, but also to some extent on my Android phone as well. Um, and we create our own little ecology. We we select and 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 uh, you know, we select ideas that suit our particular needs. And within any class, uh, unless uh, you've got a class set of say tablets of some kind um, or, or, or sort of smaller devices you know, like the iPod Touch which were you know a, a, a kind of early development uh, very useful uh, for classroom work um, and you set up that you know yourself as a teacher or a school you put you know certain sort of specific apps on there everybody in the classroom is going to have something different and in a sense that makes it easier for them to be productive because you know, they don't have to be taught things. They already know, you know, how to, you know, send messages or take a picture or word process or, or, or text somebody. They can do that. All they need to do is to be connected um, to, to, you know, in, in various ways so that they can do that. So, you know, we, we don't have to uh, all be doing the same things or all be using the same, same apps. Um, we can use different ones to achieve the same ends. Now, of course, you know, they're, you know, there are likely to be tools that you, know, you think as teacher or learners think are, are better than, than others and, 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 uh, and, and you may well recommend them. But, but essentially, uh, you know, we're into a world where we're using resources that we prefer. We're not being you know, forced to use certain, certain types of uh, technologies. 
It also, mobile learning there says uh, it implies adapting and building on the latest advance in mobile technology, redefining the responsibilities of teachers and students. I think those are, you know, are particularly interesting ideas. Um, you know, uh, it's, it is getting us to think differently about the way that we do stuff um, and the way that you know, uh, the, the idea that, that, that teachers and students have certain responsibilities to do things. And I think, you know, they're sort of witnessed in classrooms where, you know, you're trying to get learners to take responsibility and teachers for that matter, uh, responsibility for the way that they use their mobile phones or, or their, their tablet, other tablet devices or tablet devices in the classroom. Um, so that they're actually using them for an educational purpose, getting people to understand, you know, that yes, these are fat powerful tools, but, you know, we need to sort of do certain things, uh, you know, during the, you know, during it at work, you know, the work that we do, the, the work of education, uh, you know, we need to, 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 you know, think carefully about how we use these tools. Um, and, a, and a final point, which again, I think is, is, is a very important one, is this idea of blurring the lines between formal and informal learning. Uh, and I think this is, in, in essence, this is one of the really big barriers um, at the moment to uh, actually getting um, uh, getting these uh, you know, informal systems. You know, formal education has to begin to recognise the more informal processes um, uh, that, that are going on out there, the, 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 the different ways that that we learn uh, the different tools that we use for learning and, and ways of embedding them in, into you know, the regular practice that we see uh, in teaching and learning. So you know, this is one of the, the barriers to MOOCs. I mean, a lot of universities, including Manchester University, created and, and, and made MOOCs, but they're not prepared necessarily to include them into their regular teaching practice. So you know, even if you complete the certificate and pay for it, you know, how is that accredited in, into you know, the more formal processes so that you, know, you can show that you've got the skill set that you need to do a certain job, you, know, you can show your e-portfolio of materials. And, and we have to find ways of, of making that work. Otherwise, you know, we're gonna find that problematic or or essentially what will happen is that that you know the institutions who that don't do that will, will disappear uh, because they'll be superseded by other organizations that work out how to, how to do that kind of thing um you know McQuiggan do it and I also do it I would include you know a large range of different devices into the ecology um, they uh, and, and this is something that's often not really thought about so you know cr laptops and they mention Chromebooks you know because I think they're they're an important part of uh, you know some parts of the world um, you know personal media players I mentioned the iPod touch which is not a phone but it's it, it's essentially you know an, an, an iPhone but without the phone capabilities all of these different tools uh, are, are capable of, of you know being used in a mobile way um, but they do need this kind of, you know, they need this on-demand access to be able to, to do things. And I think, uh, you know, that's something that tends to be more of a feature of mobile phones than it is of some of the other tools, which which makes makes a difference. Um, you know, so they're also often much cheaper uh, th than other devices as well. Um, and this makes them, you know, I mean, all of these different features make it both easier for to bring into education, but actually in some cases, because they're these personalized tools that have this on-demand access, of course, there's then the tendency to, to, to use them inappropriately in, in the classroom. Um, and, and then, you know, that, that can cause really sort of difficult issues, both for the teacher and, 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 and the learners as well. Um, in, in all sorts of ways, you know, we have you know, the, the, the very negative side of, of the use of mobile phones with bullying and, and these kinds of things that, that, that happen. Um, increasingly, we hear about that in, in the news media. So, you know, we have to think quite carefully about how we use them. Now, Pegram, um, Mark Pegram, um, his book um, uh, is a, a really good overview, introductory overview to the use of mobile phones. Um, in language teaching and he has sort of general material in there and covers a similar sort of ground to the sort of ground that I've been talking about and McQuiggan et al talk about but he makes I think what is quite a useful distinction in terms of you know thinking about mobility for learning you know if we want to sort of begin to define it and think about it because you know I mean you know, the question of well if you have a classroom in which there are 
you know, a, a, you know, an iPad between two or, or an iPad per table. Uh, you know, a table of four children uh, have an iPad. Um, you know, in, in what sense is that mobile learning? Do we still see that as being mobile learning? Um, and and you know, he makes that distinction between when devices, you know, are, are mobile, they can actually move around the classroom. Um, so you know, you can use them in a way, uh, you know, in different kinds of ways. So increasingly, for example, if you think about augmented reality, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the tablet can be used to provide input material, it can provide, be used to provide extension material, it can be used for recording. Um, uh, so, you know, the, the devices move around the classroom, you know, so the learning itself isn't, isn't, isn't mobile in that case, it, it's the device that's mobile. And then you have the situation where, you know, the learners, you know, this is outside of the classroom, um, you know, it, it might, you know, move around in terms of a, a division between, you know, looking, going outside the school, um, you know, or, or moving around, um, you know, in, in the world, uh, again, uh, recording uh, information or, or, or doing bite-sized learning, you know, on the move. And then the final uh, distinction is when the actual learning experience is mobile, uh, when, you know, you move to a particular place um, and, you know, the device is helping you understand a particular situation, like going to a museum, for example, um, and, uh, you know, the, the device has particular information uh, that helps you to understand uh, what's what's going on there, or you may have uh, you know something like a, 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 you know a, an augmented reality tour of of a particular city. So you can point your um, you know your device at a, a at a particular part of the city, a building or a statue or something like that, and it will it will it will give you information about that. So the actual learning experience is becomes mobile it could also be that, that you know you go out and you collect collect data you collect information uh, and again you know you make use of that as a learning experience um, so you know these ideas kind of you know are not easy to sort of separate in, in some ways and, and maybe you know to some extent they're a slightly false distinction but it does make you think about the differences between well what am I doing uh, when I have some kind of mobile technology within the classroom in what ways can I use that you know in a slightly different way to just using them as an alternative to the textbook for example um, there's the fact that you know the you know, the technology can actually uh, you know be used uh, for learning uh, while people are on the move, and then there's actually the the sort of type of learning that occurs uh, when you know you're engaged in in a particular learning activity in a particular place, and the mobile's helping you do that. So that's fundamentally the distinction that that, that he makes there. Um. This, uh, I, when I was first thinking about these kinds of ideas, I came across a couple of articles, um, one by an older article by McRock and, and Oliver, um, and I thought this was a nice idea. And, uh, and uh, the, the next slide um, uh, also talks about the idea of convivial tools. Um, uh, and again, I thought this was, you know, this it got me sort of thinking sort of slightly tangentially t about about the ideas so you know this notion that you know, th that in a sense uh, what you have to do is think about how you uh, integrate these new tools into the social life of classrooms um, you know it's not just a, a matter of uh, you know like so many people argue for like Prensky argues for or Sugata Mitra and these kinds of people say you know just wipe away these institutions uh, because they have no value anymore because the internet has changed everything well the internet has changed everything but it, it also potentially um, it has to be managed in a certain kind of way we talk a lot at the moment about 21st century skills about the kind of people's criticality we talk about people's abilities to communicate and, and these things are really important we talk about creativity as well um, so you know if 
if the devices that we use uh, suppress creativity or, or, or they, they stop us being critical about the way that we view the world, then, then we have to think twice about, about, about what they do. So they have to supplement and augment what we think are, are good practices in, in, in the educational process. I mean, there's a, a lot of discussion at the moment about you know, the role that, that tools like Facebook play in, in news media and the way that, you know, that, that they provide this, this bubble in which we inhabit. Uh, and if that's what they're doing in the classroom, then you know there's a there's a, there's a problem here. So essentially, you know, we return to this idea that technology is a tool. Uh, it's it's supporting us uh, in, in what we do. So uh, you know, it's a tool, and that's linked to that notion of apprenticeship that's talked about in that that second quotation. The learner is regarded as an apprentice apprentice in a culturally defined, socially organized world. So you know, unless we give uh, are the next generation of learners the kind of skills that they need and everybody's always talking about the idea of you know we, we're training people for for a job that hasn't been invented yet but still you know there are there seems to me that there are basic uh, issues that, that need to be addressed uh, whatever kind of tool uh, you know we're actually making use of um, you know and and it has to be you know there has to be a recognition that there's a you know, there's a balance that has to be beneficial beneficial to, to, to children's development or in our case language development so this notion of convivial tools you know so again this is you know brings us back to thinking about ideas to do with um, you know the, the, the notions that that actually we have to take ownership of these tools that we have to be you know the, the people who shape what we do with it we shouldn't be shaped by the technology so you know, technology you know, is created in a certain kind of way but then we should shape its use um, and you know teachers should have a role in doing that um, and the idea of convivial tools then that is that they they promote communities encourage and maximize communication so, you know, of course, you know, we have uh, all of the, 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 the sort of social media tools that we use on a regular basis. Uh, they do encourage communication. But if we're going to do language learning with them, we must do make sure that activities, uh, you know, fit, fit the needs of, uh, you know, those sorts of types of things that we know about. So, you know, taking it back to our understanding of second language acquisition, you know, negotiation of meaning is an example that, that springs to mind. Um, you know, so these tools, you know, also ought to be, you know, in control, uh, be controlled by, you know, individuals and encourage creativity and imagination. So, you know, we shouldn't, you know, get away from that idea. So I think there's lots of ways that we can use them creatively, but we have to be sure that, 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 that that's right and it's giving people the right skills that they need. And that we, we shouldn't just be mere consumers, but also uh, producers and contributors and I mean that seems to sort of you know fit in with the the ideas that that we hear talked about a, a lot about you know students making producing materials um, you know putting those out putting those materials you know solving problems themselves and so on and so forth you know but 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 keep in mind you know the, the dangers of using these technologies uh, in in ways that you know that that control us rather than us controlling them so uh, another um, uh, uh, area that is particularly interesting is the notion of creativity and Paul Driver who I've mentioned before um, you know, he got some really nice ideas about uh, by putting creativity using technology creatively and he talks about the way that mobile phones uh, are used and he talks about creativity being principal practical productive and playful and so that fits quite nicely with those ideas of Ivan Illich and there's a link here to uh, a video of a, of a talk he did uh, at the uh, online uh, ITEFL online uh, conference back in 2015. Um, and you know, I think there's you know, if you got, got the time, it's about sort of a 20 minute, half an hour talk. Uh, if you've got the time, have a look at that because he says some really interesting things about sort of thinking about you know being somebody who's creative as a teacher and, and using technology creatively in the classroom. Let's move on then to look at ideas about uh, about how teachers then uh, kind of engage with what they do. And this is a, a model that's been mentioned um, by, by a, a number of people um, in discussion, certainly earlier in, in the semester in, in 2016, uh, 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 this was raised as, as a, a model to think about. 
And I'm not entirely convinced about this model and, and I think a lot of other people are not entirely convinced about it, but you do hear it talked about a lot in relationship to, to mobile technologies or, or digital technologies in general. And I think, you know, that there, there are some, you know, positive things about this, but there's a sense like with all of these sorts of, uh, you know, models is that, you know, you should be redefining what you do, um, you know, that, that somehow substitution and augmentation are perhaps, you know, things that, that uh, you know, uh, are, are kind of, you know, lower level kind of strategies. But this is essentially a model that suggests that, you know, we can work through different, you know, we can think about uh, as teachers, uh, you know, the ways that we do things differently um, uh, when we, we bring technology in, into a class. So, you know, if a technology just simply, you know, so if, you know, say for example, a word processor is just, uh, you know, substitutes for handwriting, then it does something. But unless it adds something different or you as teacher, you know, do something different with the activities that, that you're, you know, you're presenting, um, then, uh, you know, there, there's not, you know, it, it kind of begs the question about why you're using it. Um, the next level is, is the idea of augmentation. Um, so, you know, in the sense of, you know, again, the word processor, um, you know, it, it immediately adds some kind of, you know, functional improvement, as it says there. So, you know, it has a spell checker in it, for, for example. Um, you know, it does something different. It allows you to move text around. It allows you to play with text. It allows you to edit it. Um, uh, you know, if you then uh, move up to the next level um, where you're, you know, you're transforming the task that you do, um, then you know you might have something where you know you get students like we've talked about to collaborate in in something uh, you know again with a word processor we see, keep with that example you know a Google Doc allows you to to jointly edit a, a document in real time um, uh, so it, it allows you to sort of change the task it allows you to bring people in from outside or, or, or it makes some you know different contribution to, to what you're doing um and redefinition is the kind of holy grail if you like and then where it says technology allows for the creation of new tasks previously inconceivable so you know it's quite a tall order really um uh, and uh, the idea that you know maybe uh, you know i i suppose you, you you might think of something like maybe something along the lines of fan fiction for example one of those things that um, that we talked about with digital games um, you know fan fiction is a kind of you know it's a kind of writing um, that wouldn't have been thought of that wouldn't been possible uh, without the, uh, the, the, the the possibility of, of, of online uh, you know word processing type type tools so it's 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 a good way of getting you to think kind of creatively about what you do and and, and, and perhaps questioning um, you know what it is you're doing when, when you're designing creating tasks but uh, uh, you know maybe we shouldn't take it too literally um, in terms of what we do but it's it's certainly you know an interesting to get us thinking um, another person who um, uh, has done a lot of work in the area of, of technology um, uh, mobile technologies and language teaching um, it, it is Kulkulska Hume who works at the the Open University and uh, she's produced with other colleagues at the Open University a, a, a recent report uh, that that tries to look at um, you know how teachers uh, design tasks and 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 you know what we should take into account um, you know when we're thinking about designing tasks uh, for, for mobile technologies uh, and they have this nice framework uh, and they talk about the idea of teacher wisdom uh, you know the, so you know teachers you know, shouldn't leave that at the door. So that idea of um, teachers uh, being the digital immigrant who don't have, you know, much to offer in this world where we didn't grow up, you know, where we weren't born digital, or certainly I wasn't born digital, we still bring something to the classroom. I mean, I my, my idea is somehow that, you know, that, that teachers are, are, are these bilinguals, you know, that they, they, they try and mediate the practices that, that go on. So yes, they, they provide their skills and understanding about language learning um, to the devices. And, you know, they're capable of exploring the features uh, of the devices um, you know, either in class or in the wider world to, to, to begin to sort of think about ways that you can do that. 
you've got the notions of learner mobilities, which uh, um, Pikram talked about, um, you know, where the, the learning happens. Um, and, and then you've got things like language dynamics. Um, so different ways that, that language can be accessed through 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 the technology and, and you know so podcasting or video or text or uh, you know games that have language in them different forms of you know social media and, and so on and so forth so all of these things uh, you know are, are something that that you know provide opportunities uh, for, for teachers to actually think about the way that they, they design tasks and teachers also, according to Kukulsa Hume and uh, colleagues, uh, you know, uh, need to think about some of the, um, you know, the, what, what they, they refer to as cross-cutting questions um, uh, about the outcomes of, of what happens. So, uh, you know, uh, the, you might think about this in terms of, uh, you know, inquiry, the notion of engaging with activities um, you know, in, in different kinds of spaces. So language is constantly changing, it's constantly being used in, in, in a variety of different ways. So people exploring uh, language, um, you know, uh, on, you know, uh, uh, some kind of app, uh, like, uh, 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 you know, exchanging SMS, looking at language, exchanging it in that kind of way. Um, how do you deal with issues like rehearsal? Um, you know, in, in terms of um, enabling people to to actually do the sorts of practices that that enable them to actually try things out, try language out, use it, um, and then finally, um, you know, does does an activity allow you to reflect on your progress so that uh, it. it, it gets you to sort of think about well what have I learned and what can I still what can I do now and what 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 you know what what, what, what am I able uh, you know what do I need to do for the future and these kinds of you know metacognitive practices are, are increasingly important you know both in regular classrooms as they are in, in language teaching so to practical ideas if you know you want to follow this up there are practical ideas in in the Pegram book um, uh, lots of examples lots of little case studies of examples of people using mobile technologies uh, there's uh, a, a starting book uh, by called going mobile by Nikki Hockley and Gavin Dudney uh, published by Delta publishing it's got a lot of kind of standard kind of activities and uh, also this is a nice collection uh, here of, of articles this is uh, an organization that, that commissions uh, little research projects um, and you'll find you know, Nikki's got some uh, nice activities here in this article but you've also got some some other kind of names that that, that you'll have come across um, people like Ken Beattie and uh, th this article by Stockwell and Hubbard is an interesting um, uh, set of ideas principles about about using um, mobile assisted learning um, and you'll see uh, at the bottom there um, John Traxler who who is you know, one of the, you know, the the key names in the field uh, you know, the, the uh, talking about that various issues there so that that's got you know both practical and kind of theoretical material in it so if uh, that's something that you can obviously follow up if you want um, so I've provided a set of references at the end, the same references are on the wiki um, and uh, I think that covers all of them um, and you can see uh, here, um, just make it bigger, and so you can see the, the, the different references I've made, so the Puente Dura um, is you know, reference linked for the SAMA model and there's uh, uh, quite an interesting YouTube uh, presentation there where he, he talks about these things. Um, so I'm going to stop there and uh, look forward to hearing your ideas uh, on the forum.